live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Today, just about every network televises college football all day Saturday. If you're a sports network, it doesn't matter what games you're airing. You're airing something that day. ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU, CBS Sports Network, FS1, you get the idea. Every network televises college football, no matter how good or bad their games are, and no matter how good or bad the other games on other networks may be. If you've got a big game airing on ABC at 7.30 Eastern, between two teams ranked inside the top 10, CBS Sports Network, even though their game features two teams in Conference USA sitting below 500, that features a stadium that is 80% empty, is still going to show their game. You'll never see a network say, yeah, no one's going to watch our game because there's a much better game going on. So we're just going to show a completely different sport instead that we never otherwise show and hope to draw an audience that way. You're not going to see ESPN decide to air axe throwing over an ACC game. You're not going to see ESPN2 air spike ball over an SEC game. You're not going to see CBS Sports Network air a tape delay of bull riding over an American conference game. You get the idea. Having said all that, you might be able to see where this one is going. Because in 1996, ESPN conceded defeat. The network that aired practically nothing but college football on Saturdays saw the game that they had on their schedule, saw what other games were taking place that week, and just gave up and decided to air nothing instead. In 1996, ESPN was originally supposed to air the Big East rivalry game between the Pitt Panthers and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And what they ended up airing instead was, well, it was definitely not football, I'll tell you that much. Because this is the story behind the bizarre broadcasting controversy where ESPN, arguably the premier college football network in the entire nation, decided not to air college football. Before I talk about the decision that ESPN came to, as well as what ESPN aired instead, we need some context to understand not just the game that the network was originally supposed to air, but the game airing on a completely different network that had ESPN completely reevaluating their plans. It's November 30th, 1996. It's two days after Thanksgiving. And if you're a college football fan, you know what that means. It's one of the greatest rivalry weeks of the entire year. For a lot of teams, their biggest game of the season was the game taking place this week. Not only could it determine bowl eligibility, not only was it for just about everyone playing, the last game of the regular season, and not only could it determine your chances at playing in a bowl alliance game, but it was a chance for many teams at beating one of your biggest rivals. You had games taking place that week like Texas against Texas A&M, the Egg Bowl between Ole Miss and Mississippi State, Georgia Georgia Tech, USC Notre Dame, Virginia Tech, Virginia, Tennessee Vanderbilt, LSU Arkansas, and Nebraska Colorado, just to name a few. A lot of great games where there's a ton of bad blood between the two schools. And one of those games was the battle between Pitt and Rutgers, the teams that played every year against each other since 1985. And you're watching a compilation of some moments from those previous 11 years in the rivalry right now. Now this wasn't exactly a very close rivalry, as Pitt led the all-time series 11-2, but it was still a rivalry nonetheless. On top of that, a lot of Rutgers fans, back in the days of the Big East, considered Pitt to be their biggest rival. If it wasn't Pitt, they were a very close second behind Penn State. Especially in the 90s, the Rutgers-Penn State rivalry was pretty one-sided, as I'm not sure anyone at Penn State had any ill will toward Rutgers, just because the two schools were so far apart from each other in terms of the golf and talent, then it was tough for Penn State to even care about Rutgers. However, with Pitt and Rutgers, since both teams routinely occupy the cellar of the Big East, it led to some close games and some heated tensions. With that in mind, with Pitt and Rutgers set to square off against each other at Pitt Stadium on this final Saturday of November at noon, ESPN was set to televise this game. And aside from the fact that it was a big deal to play on national TV, especially for a team like Rutgers, this was a massive recruiting opportunity. Rutgers was only set to be on national TV two other times in 1996, 
and both of those games were against ranked opponents in Miami and Notre Dame, that no one gave them a shot in the world at winning. At least with this game, they'd have a chance on paper to be competitive, get a win, and look impressive. However, there was just one small problem as we neared the end of October. Yeah, Pitt and Rutgers absolutely sucked. They were terrible, to the point where the game was going to mean absolutely nothing. Through the first nine games of the season, the Panthers were just 3-6, and six, and with only two games left in their season, they physically could not make it to a bowl game. And it's not like the Panthers were a good 3-6 and six team either, if there's even such a thing. They were getting absolutely annihilated in their games. They played two ranked teams, playing number 7 ranked Ohio State and number 10 ranked Miami. Combined, Pitt lost those games 117 to nothing. For some perspective on how bad that is, if you allowed an average of two touchdowns a quarter, you would lose, on average, by less points than Pitt lost in those two games. They were shut out three times in their first nine games, also losing 34-0 at home to West Virginia to open up the season, and against a Syracuse team that was 500 entering their matchup, they lost 55-7. And Pitt had a five-game stretch at one point during the season, where they allowed a whopping 269 points, or 53.8 points per game, allowing a 50-burger plus three points, on average, every game for half a season. That's pathetic, and it's no surprise why Pitt had, out of 111 teams, the third worst defense in all Division 1A in terms of points allowed. But here's the crazy part. Despite all of that, Pitt was significantly better than Rutgers, because the Scarlet Knights were truly abysmal. By the end of October, they had played eight games, and they were 2-6, with one of their wins coming against a Division 1 AA team. They went on a six-game losing streak against Division 1A opponents, where they were shut out twice, and scored 14 points or less in five out of those six games, making it no surprise that, of the 111 teams in Division 1A, Rutgers had the fourth worst offense of the bunch. Nothing whatsoever about the Scarlet Knights in their first season under head coach Terry Shea was even the slightest bit appealing on the eye or appetizing to watch. And it didn't help them whatsoever that in their only appearance on the big ESPN earlier in the season, they played Miami and lost 33-0, completely laying an egg and putting in an uncompetitive performance. At the end of October, this was the game that ESPN was stuck with. Two teams that were out of bowl contention with some of the worst offenses and worst defenses in the entire country. And that was the game at 12 o'clock on ESPN that day. Now, it's not like ESPN could air any other game at that time slot, but that didn't mean that Pitt Rutgers was the only game on TV at 12 o'clock. Because at the exact same time, airing over on ABC, you had a game that may have been just a teeny tiny bit more important. And by that, I mean a game that was, on paper, one of the biggest regular season games of all time. Because at 12 o'clock, you didn't just have the in-state rivalry game between Florida and Florida State, but you had a battle between the number one ranked team and the number two ranked team in the entire country. Both Florida and Florida State entered this game with undefeated 10-0 records, and to say that this game was huge would be the understatement of the century. If Florida State won this game, they would clinch a spot in the Sugar Bowl with an undefeated record and the Bowl Alliance Championship. If Florida lost this game, then even though they could still clinch a spot in the Sugar Bowl if they won the SEC Championship against Alabama, it would be an uphill climb to have a shot at the national title, as they would need some results to go their way elsewhere, as they would not only need Ohio State to lose to Michigan, but then they would need Arizona State to lose in the Rose Bowl. Not like that combination of results was ever going to happen. Everything was on the line in this game. This was not just the marquee game of the week, and not just the marquee game of the year, but was the marquee regular season game of the entire decade. And in ESPN's mind, with the Florida-Florida State game airing on ABC at the same exact time, they asked themselves a very valid question. Who the heck was going to watch Pitt against Rutgers? You would have diehard Pitt fans watching, you would have diehard Rutgers fans watching, you'd have sickos who bet on the game in Vegas, and yeah, that's about it. If you were watching college football at the time, you weren't watching Pitt against Rutgers. You were watching Florida against Florida State. No questions asked. 
two undefeated teams in a number one versus number two battle, or two abysmal teams that had nothing to play for outside of bragging rights. Gee, tough call. This left ESPN with two options, since they couldn't televise a different game. Option one was to air this game, compete directly against ABC, even though the two networks were owned by the same company in Disney, and have absolutely no one watch this game outside of a select few people in the Northeast, probably losing a ton of money in production costs in the process. Or, option two was to just not air a college football game at all, and to show something completely different. You're not going to get the college football audience to watch this game, but if you air something that's low cost, that appeals to people who aren't into college football, that might work. It's the same logic behind counter-programming major events with something completely different. If there's a major sporting event like the Super Bowl airing, you don't counter that with another expensive sporting event. You counter that with something that doesn't appeal to sports fans. If there's a big country music award show, you don't counter that with a big budget documentary on a country music artist. You counter that with something that doesn't appeal to people who like country music. And for ESPN, they came to the decision that they were not going to air pit Rutgers. It would be too much of a money pit. No one would watch, and the game meant absolutely nothing. There's no reason to compete against Florida, Florida State, especially when that game is on a network owned by your parent company. ESPN would air the Pitt Rutgers game when the two teams met in 1997, but for 1996, they weren't going to do it anymore. So that raises the obvious question you've got to show something at 12 o'clock. You can't just show nothing. But you're doing this on relatively short notice. You're only doing this about two or three weeks before the game, and there's not a whole lot of events that you own the rights to. What are you going to show? Well, they showed a combination of incredibly low-budget, inexpensive programming that was pre-taped and cost nothing to air that you usually see on days where ESPN knows they're going to lose the battle. At 12 o'clock Eastern, they showed a cheerleading competition. This was followed at 1 o'clock by highlights of an air show in Wisconsin that took place in July, and at 2 o'clock was followed by World's Strongest Man. In other words, if you've ever flipped through the programming guide when ESPN has to compete against something like the Super Bowl or a major NFL game, it's exactly what you'd expect. Nothing whatsoever has changed from the mid-90s. ESPN knew that no one was going to watch their network during this time, so they figured to air programming that costs no money and could be completely automated was the right move. And all things considered, when you think about ESPN's logic and their thought process, and what the average college football fan across the country was thinking, as much as it hurt for the true diehard fans of Pitt and Rutgers, who actually still wanted to watch their teams, yeah, they absolutely made the right call here from a business standpoint. I can't fault them, considering the production costs that would have been associated with this and how much money they would have lost. I can't fault them for not showing this game, and for essentially directing everyone over to ABC by airing low effort and low cost programming. And for those wondering, even though there are no highlights of the game for obvious reasons based on everything I talked about, seeing as it wasn't televised, Pitt won 24-9. Today, it's hard to imagine ESPN ever having time on a Saturday and not airing college football. Not because there was a major event on like the women's final of the US Open, but because they wanted to air pre-taped events that they had already shown, and that had an audience that was minuscule by comparison. It's hard to imagine the worldwide leader in sports having an option to air the biggest sport in the country, and choosing not to do so. But in 1996, that's exactly what happened, when due to the Florida Florida State game over on ABC, ESPN decided that airing Pitt would be a giant money pit. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com. And be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.